Good day, strategy gamers, and welcome to another Let's Learn to Play Downfall Conquest of the Third Reich video. This episode, we're going to be covering movement of land units and zone of control and its effects. This is going to be a pretty straightforward video, but the zone of control rules, uh, as I mentioned in some of my other videos, uh, can feel just a little different. So hopefully we can leave this video with a very clear understanding of zone of control and land movement. We begin by looking at the Soviet East Front here, and we're going to, in this hypothetical situation, say that the uh, Western slash OKH player is the phasing player here. And if you want to move any land units in downfall conquest of the Third Reich, that's done through redeploy operations. And redeploy ops uh, have order markers looking like these two here that allow you to move the units that are depicted in that counter. So, for example, this uh, counter would allow the uh, phasing player to move infantry, armor, and naval type units around on the map. And the three represents how many movement points the player is allowed to expend per unit. So this is not how many units you can move, rather it's how far you can move for any move action you take. In theory, you could take every land unit that you have that meets the qualifications on this counter and move it when playing this order. Secondly, uh, this other order I just want to highlight. Uh, this allows for both movement and combat. So the hybrid symbols there for move and combat are sometimes seen on these order markers. So this would also be relevant for understanding land movement. Let's focus, though, and say that the OKH player has used this order uh, to move up to three movement points for infantry, armor, and naval units. Naval we will not be covering in this video. And when we look on the Eastern Front, uh, we see that the <laughs> situation is, is, of course, a little tough. And in the beginning of the game, the Axis players on the East Front have a huge uh, amount of land to try to cover, and there's some openings in between the lines. So you can see uh, here there's an opening by Bryansk, there is an opening just northeast of Kursk, etc. So the, the whole line is littered with opportunities or weak spots. However, Zone of Control makes that a little more interesting in this game. So what I'm going to do is highlight on the map Zone of Control specifically from this unit here, just northeast of Bryansk. Let's first begin by identifying which hexes the Soviet player is exerting zone of control in. So those are all the neighboring hexes that the Soviet player has to their unit. Uh, there are, of course, also zone of control effects in the rear of the unit, but uh, we're going to just try to simplify this here. So. These three hexes all have a zone of control from this unit here, the 33rd, 49th, 50th Infantry unit. And it's important to note uh, that zone of controls are not negated by the presence of one of your units. Really, zone of control, the complexity comes in with hex spines. I shouldn't even say complexity, really. It's just the most important thing to understand is the hex spines and how zone of control works there. So what I'm going to do is highlight those hex spines from this unit by Bryansk. These markers are a little large, but I hope it helps. So this Soviet unit has zone of control in these three hexes, and the hex spine dividing these two hexes and the hex spine dividing these two hexes are both part of the zone of control. What this means is that the OKH player is not allowed to cross this hex spine to move. So I could not take the second panzer here underneath this marker. This unit cannot move into Bryansk because of the hex spine that exists between the two hexes and the zone of control effects from that unit. If we look just a little further to the northwest, we will also highlight this situation. Here we have multiple Soviet units 
there are hex spines dividing these two German forces, this infantry unit cannot move into this hex even though a friendly force is there. In a lot of games, that friendly force would negate the zone of control effects. In downfall, no such action occurs. Zone of control is not negated across the hex spines. So with that understanding, let's actually now go through and demonstrate some valid um, examples of movement that the OKH player would be allowed to do with this particular order. Now one of the, the first things would be that you may want to just pull back the second panzer. And you could move from Orel into Kursk, you know, big strategic objective, you want to fortify that a little bit. And that would cost one movement point. You're moving from clear terrain to clear terrain, and that's one movement point. We see on the order marker that we're allowed up to three movement points. Hypothetically, this unit then could also continue retreating back south into Ukraine, or perhaps it decides to move into this hill region uh, for some type of defensive bonus. That is allowed, but because of this terrain, it has an increased movement expense. And this can all be found in the back of the rule book, the last page on the back cover, explaining for the different terrain effects chart what the movement point cost is. Moving into hills or swamp or forests all take two movement points to conduct that action. So we could move from Orel into the hills, which cost two movement points, and then we could move down into this clear hex for three movement points. Those are all valid moves. What we are not able to do is move from Orel to Bryansk and down into this hex because we are crossing the hex spine of the Soviet unit's zone of control. Again, it's not negated by anything. That you really have to, to remember that. The other important thing to note with land movement and downfall are the rail lines. And you can see these depicted quite clearly on the map. These white lines represent rail lines um, that, that can be leveraged for land movement. Anytime you move along these rail lines, the movement point cost is one. Now, one would think, let's go for morale into this hill terrain because that only costs one movement point. That's correct, but you have to then stop next to Orel in this hilly hex because zone of control strike again. Zone of control from this unit here is projecting into this hex and when you enter an enemy zone of control, you must halt your movement. That's why for this particular unit, you would likely move to the southeast into Kursk expending one movement point, and then you can follow the rail line for two movement points and three movement points if you did want to retreat down that far. So zone of control, very important to remember as you consider your movement options. Again, negating is not a thing, so you cannot move from this hex into this hex because of the hex spine. And you could sit here and you could move every single access unit, OKH unit, with this move order, with each unit expending up to three movement points, as long as its classification is listed on that order counter. So with that, we're going to pause and we're next going to look at partisans and how to move those around on the map. When considering partisans and moving them around on the map, you first need to make sure that you have a partisan move order. So this is a Soviet order marker for redeploy ops. And you can see here this little partisan marker exists below. This then qualifies you to be able to move a partisan marker during this order operation sequence. So if you have, say, an infantry and an armor marker, and that's all on the counter, you would not be able to move this partisan marker. Again, same logic applies where you can move up to three movement points. The interesting thing about partisans, though, is they have no bearing on zonal controls. It, it does not impact them in any way. Instead, they have a rather unique rule around staying within the uh, nation's borders 
during their movement. So this partisan unit is currently sitting in Serbia. And Serbia is represented by these five hexes here. And you can see this dotted line marking the nation's um, sovereign borders. So for example, there's a rail line going from this hex it's presently in into Sarajevo. Even though it would only cost one movement point, we cannot move into Sarajevo, Sarajevo as that would then be crossing the national border of Serbia and Croatia. This unit must stay within Serbia. Another interesting rule about partisans is they may actually enter the hex of enemies without consequence. So we could leave the mountains and actually go here into Belgrade with this German um, unit, and that is a valid move as well. And all of the rules around movement points just continue where we could go one, because there's a rail line, and then we could continue up to this hex again because there's a rail line. So that would cost two movement points and all valid as you may either finish or move through uh, opposing forces. So that's partisan movement in a nutshell. Just remember that you have a um, redeploy op with a partisan unit marker. Next, we're gonna take a quick look at port-to-port -port movement of land units. The last segment in this video is going to be covering the movement of land units through a mechanic of port-to-port -port movement. Now in this hypothetical situation, we have the 5th Panzer uh, stuck in North Africa and we know that its destiny is sealed and we want to try to get it back to mainland Europe uh, for some type of other purpose. To get it out of North Africa, it involves having to cross the Mediterranean uh, effectively. And to do so, we can leverage a mechanic of port-to-port -port movement. To use port-to-port -port movement, it's really quite straightforward. You use a redeploy ops, just as we have been discussing so far, uh, that qualifies for the unit. And here we have the 5th Panzer, which is currently uh, in its infantry uh, setting. And we also have a redeploy op that has naval uh, movement uh, allowable on the marker as well and armor for three movement points. What we're going to do is use this order and then we're allowed to move the fifth panzer from a port. So it has to already be in a port. We're gonna move it from the port and we're then going to find another port connect it to a C zone that we have movement in. Let me kind of explain that briefly. So here we have the Italian Navy that is in the Western Medi Mediterranean and Tunis, where the 5th Panzer is currently located to, is actually connected to both the Western Mediterranean and the Central Mediterranean. So we have two options in terms of which C, we, C zone we move into first. We could take the 5th Panzer unit, move it through the Western Mediterranean Sea to any port connected to the sea zone. So we could move it to Naples. We could equally move it to Palermo, uh, perhaps for the defense of Sicily. Uh, so we, we could move it to Cagliari. I mean, I don't know why, but you could because it is part of the Western Mediterranean. Equally, you could go from Tunis into the central Mediterranean, and you do see that we have Italian naval units here, and drop the 5th Panzer off at any port connected to the central Mediterranean. And you can go across multiple sea zones during this movement too. In a very strange hypothetical, you could go from the central Mediterranean over to the eastern Mediterranean and drop it off at a friendly controlled port. That is possible. When we do a port-to-port -port movement, and let's say here that we're actually going to move it to Naples, as that's perhaps a more realistic outcome. When we move it to Naples, that unit is now done for this movement phase. All movement points have been exhausted regardless of the distance that you've actually moved the unit. The other important thing, which we won't go into the full mechanics in this video, but in a later video, is that this C zone has both Italian naval units, but also Western Allied naval units. This particular port-to-port -port move would have resulted in a sea interception uh, mechanic as well as sea attack, uh, which has some cost to the uh, OKW player that may prevent them from actually making this move.
So really that's port to port movement in a nutshell. It's pretty straightforward. You can use the redeploy order. The key criteria are that you are in a port hex, moving to another port hex as the name entails, and that the C zone or plural in between the two ports has your faction's naval units present here, in this case, Italian naval units. With that, we're going to bring this video covering land movement and zone of controls to a close. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch. If you have any questions or comments about anything in the video, please do leave them down below. And as always, strategy gamers, hoping you have yourselves an excellent day. Bye now.